Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team. On the following videos we are going to cover Lightning in Unity 5. For today we are going to focus on the Spotlight. If you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like and if you want more Unity 5 tutorials remember to subscribe to our channel. Now as you can see I'm still using the same scene that I used on the last video. Before we move on, let's first delete our point light from our scene. Ok, and now let's add the spotlight. To do that, go to the main menu, game object, light and select spotlight. Now let's just position the, the light in the right place, so let's move to the top view and we want to center it so our box is in the origin so we can just set all coordinates to zero change this to orthographic exactly so as you can as you guys can see yes oops i mean turn this to zero uh it's in place so to the front view now we need to make it a little bit upper and I think we have our light in place exactly as you guys can see. Uh, now spotlights uh, shine from a point in a direction and only illuminate objects within a cone that you guys can actually see here represented by these yellow lines. Basically they work like a, the spotlight works like a headlight of a car. So as you may imagine, this type of light is perfect for flashlights, car headlights or lamp posts. However, they are also the most expensive for the graphic processor, so keep that in mind when you are using it. Now, if we select our spotlight and take a look at the parameters, you can see that, is that, uh, the, that the parameters are actually very similar to the point, point light that we actually study on the last video. So the first parameter on the light component is type. Here you can set spot, directional point or area. Since we are going to focus on the spotlight, let's just leave this option as spot. The second parameter is baking. Uh, here you can set baking to real time, bake it or mix it just like in the point light and next you have range so here you can set how far the light emitted is emitted from the center of the object so we don't need such a big range in this case but let's just leave it to, to 10 for now so basically what the range does is, is that it changes the height of your cone so right now let's just leave it to the default value which is 10 and the following parameter is a specific for the spotlight which is the spot angle so this determines the angle of the cone in degrees right now we have 30 degrees this angle here above so we can change that we can sorry guys wrong parameter I want to change the spotlight spot angle sorry so as you guys can see you can actually change it to be thicker or 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 better or bigger so let's just leave it like this for 50 yes 50 may be good okay um so moving on we have the color parameter here you can set the color you want your light to emit so you can give it a bluish color or yeah, let's just give it a bluish color why not um, next we have the the intensity Here's you, here you can set the brightness of the light so just, just make it a little bit brighter why not um, you can also change the, the bouncing intensity However, um, like I said in the previous video, this feature is the, the real-time indirect bounce light uh, shadowing for spot and point light is not supported right now, 
it will be probably supported on future versions of Unity, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can set the bounce intensity, so let's just leave it to, to 1.6, why not? Um, next, uh, you can configure the shadows. You can either set to no shadows, like it is right now, you can set hard shadows or soft shadows. For example, if you set hard shadows, you can set the strength of the shadows, you can set the resolution quality, so you can use the, the quality settings that are defined in your project. You can use the low resolution, medium resolution, high resolution or very high resolution. Right now, just let's just leave use quality settings and you have the bias next so on bias and normal bias you can configure the offset used when comparing the pixel position in the light space with the value of the shadow map so just that let's just leave the bias on the default values next on cookie um, here you can actually set um, a texture that will be used as a mask that will change the bright of the light in different places so basically you just go here and you can select I think this one may work yes so as you guys can see from the point light I, I was not able to show you because you needed a, cu a cube map and I didn't want to create one but on the on the spotlight you can actually use a texture so you can see the, the effect right here on on certain areas the effect of the light is brighter than others so you can just use this one you can also use this one here so yeah basically we have uh, can use uh, let's just see if we have another one so we have this one for example um, we can also change for example let me see this one as well so you can right now I have several textures that we can use uh, let's but let's just leave it to none um, next you have um, flare uh, sorry next you have hello um, if we enable the hello option unity will draw a hello around the light source so let's just turn this off and now we go you move on to flare so here you can set a reference to a flare to be rendered in the light position so you don't have any flare so just let's leave it to none next on render mode you can either select auto important or non important like you guys can see here this will basically give the the render the, the importance of the light in the scene so how the importance of of how this light will affect the scene so will be important not important or you just let it go on to autopilot and let unity decide by itself um, and finally we have the calling mask um, here you can select or exclude the group of objects affected by the light right now you have all group of objects affected by this light And let's just press play and see how this works. So as you guys can see here, our bouncing light with shadows is working just fine, just like we wanted. Now um, regarding direct and indirect lightning, um, the spotlights work exactly like the point lights, so like I mentioned in the previous video. You must be careful setting up the balance of lights in your game. Uh, so, you want your game to look good, but you don't want it to be too heavy for the processor, so you need to keep that balance. Remember that you can change the balance, let's say that you can uh, adjust the balance by playing with the shadows and the baking in order to, make your, to improve your game look and performance. Um, okay guys, so this concludes our tutorial on the spotlight, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and until next video, have a nice day.